If you are preparing for Snowflake SnowPro Specialty Gen AI exam, this video will save you days of effort. In the next 10 minutes, I will show you exactly what to study, the real question patterns I saw in the exam, the trickiest topics people get stuck on, and the hands-on task you must practice to pass confidently. So, who is this video for? This video is for anyone who has already having a valid SnowPro Core certification and wants a clear roadmap for the SnowPro Specialty Gen AI exam without feeling lost in the Snowflake documentation. If your SnowPro certification has expired, you would not qualify for this Gen AI exam and you have to reappear for SnowPro certification. Here, the shortest possible exam summary. You have to attempt 55 questions in 85 minutes. This includes multiple choice questions, multi select questions, and a few interactive format questions. The passing score is set to 750. The exam version is GES C01. And you have to pay $225. And if your profile belongs to India, your registration fees is only $180 plus taxes. This is not a snowflake basic exam. You will be tested on how well you use the available Cortex AI feature within Snowflake for structured and unstructured data processing, available of large language model functions, and when to use them, vector search plus rag patterns for different real life use cases, intelligent document processing using Doc AI with zero shot and few shot approach, how model registry and container services work to host other models and most importantly, governance and cost control when these AI features are applied for a different enterprise level use cases. Expect scenario based question and subtle syntax differences when it comes to AI SQLs. Here is the domain breakdown for Gen AI specialty exam. Domain 1, the Snowflake Gen AI overview with 26% weightage, having two subsections expecting you to know Snowflake's Gen AI principles, features, and best practices as well as Snowflake Gen AI capabilities. Domain 2, Snowflake Gen AI and LLM function with 40% weightage and this domain expect you to know different Gen AI and LLM features supported by Snowflake including Cortex features, Cortex search, Cortex analyst, Cortex agent, vector function, helper function including large language model capabilities, latency requirement and cost function. This also covers structure versus unstructured data analysis use cases, including chat interface kind of use case. Domain 3, Snowflake Gen AI governance with 22% weightage and this domain layout all the governance and access control features including guardrails, hallucination, biases, monitoring and AI observability feature. Domain 4, Snowflake's Doc AI with 12% weightage and this domain is all about intelligent document processing starting from setup to querying to debugging the document processing use cases. So the golden rule here, if you include domain 1 and domain 2, which covers 66% of your overall syllabus, and this is where you need to focus most so you can increase your success rate. So let's go and have it domain by domain breakdown. If you are new to LLM and Gen AI features in the Snowflake platform and has never used any one of them, here is my tips to focus on when it comes to domain 1. Understand terminologies and snowflake principle behind Cortex LLM, Cortex Search, Cortex Analyst, Semantic Models, when to use model registry versus container services, how to apply RBAC and control model visibility, different interfaces to interact with LLM and, and how snowflake applies cross-region inferences if the particular model is not available in the specific region. With 26% of weightage, you can expect at least 12 to 14 trickier questions from this domain that will try to validate if you have really understood the right purpose of Gen AI features for a different Gen AI use cases. The domain 2 carries the highest weight in the exam, which is 40%, and you can expect at least 20 to 22 questions from this domain alone. And as you can see, it contains five subsections. This is the domain where you must practice hands-on because the exam will ask SQL-based and scenario-based questions directly from the LLM functions. The exam uses subtle syntax differences. So 
only reading the documentation is not enough. This domain is your scoring zone. I strongly recommend practicing the complete function including structured output with different parameter options and intentionally testing a few wrong values to understand the error message pattern. Also, practice all the purpose-built SQL functions like classify text, extract answer, summarize, translate, embed text, parse document along with other helper functions. The Snowflake is trying to rename all those functions called AI summarize or AI translate to support multimodality. Don't skip the vector functions, especially cosine similarity, inner product, L1 or L2 distance because this concept may appear in a multi-step questions during the exam. If you practice this domain well, you will be able to handle the confusing questions in the exam that often differ only by small syntax changes or slight variation in input and output. Now let's talk about governance domain, which has 22% weightage in the exam. What it means that you may expect around again 10 to 12 questions from this domain. This section focuses heavily on access control, especially the model allow list, because it directly impacts which model users can access and how model visibility is controlled through the RBAC. You also need to understand how to apply guardrails inside SQL functions, how Snowflake manages token cost minimization, and how to read the usage history tables, and how cross-region inferences affect cost and latency. Basic API authentication knowledge is also important for a few questions. If you skip the governance, you risk losing around 25% of the exam because the governance concept can be mixed with other subject area from the exam and a situational question may come during the exam. Another important part of this domain is AI observability. This is slightly harder to practice because it requires more setup, but you can still expect few to four questions from this topic. Snowflake will test whether you understand evaluation metrics, tracing, logging, and how observability tools help track model behavior. Overall, governance is a high impact domain with tricky scenario based questions. So I recommend studying this section carefully. Domain four, this is the smallest section with just 12% of the weightage. And with a few hours of hands-on practice, you would be able to answer almost all the questions from this domain. My advice to you to focus on privileges, model build, get pre-signed URL function, data formats, and basic troubleshooting. By the way, this video is only the fast track version of Gen AI certification prep. If you want a deeper walkthrough of each domain, I have created separate videos as a part of this playlist where every topic and subtopic is explained in detail. And it covers what to read, what to practice, what works in trial edition, and what kind of questions you can expect in the exam for each subtopic. This separate domain specific video helps you to pick only the topic you need, domain one, domain two, three, or four, and watch them at your own pace. I also have separate hands-on demos for those who want to practice the Cortex functions, Doc AI and other Gen AI features inside Snowflake as a part of this playlist. You will find the video link in the description below and also right here in the YouTube card above. So here is my 10 days recommendation certification prep plan. So what I'm going to explain is not the order in which the syllabus is written. If you follow the syllabus in sequence, you will get confused very quickly because topics jump between Cortex features, LLM function, governance control and Doc AI. Instead, this is the plan I personally followed for my own exam and it worked extremely well because it groups similar concepts together and builds your understanding step by step. If you follow this study order, your preparation will feel much more logical. So spend first two days understanding how Snowflake Gen AI Foundation works. Focus on Cortex basics, AI SQL constructs, input output structure of each LLM function or so-called AI SQL functions, required versus optional parameter. Exam will try to understand which AI SQL function takes the model as an input or it is a purpose-built SQL functions. So they will give you a scenario and try to confuse you with different parameter. Processing both structured and unstructured data. So you may have unstructured data coming from your PDF file or it may coming from audio file and you need to understand which purpose build function should be applied for a given use case. Then Cortex search concept, Cortex analyst and how semantic search works, semantic model YAML specification file, which is a very large file. 
And this is one of the important thing. You will surely get one or two question from this semantic model YAML specification. They will give you a scenario and will ask you which attribute of the YAML file will hold this information. Use the next two to three days to go deeper into purpose built GNI and LLM function. Practice hands on with classify text, extract answer, summarization, translate, AI embed, or the older version like embed text 768 or embed text 1024. Pass document, specifically, the exam will have a question. This is a very large document which has a lot of sales information. How would you extract information? And they will try to understand whether you can differentiate doc AI use case versus ad hoc doc processing use case. Structure output variant, helper functions like count token, try complete and split text recursively. They will also give you a scenario where you have to build a pipeline. And here you need to understand how to do the pre-processing and how to do the post-processing and what all AI function you should use it. Make sure you read the documentation and also have a hands-on so you understand how this different purpose-built SQL function works. This three to five days phase makes you comfortable with actual AI SQL functions that dominate the exam. Now dedicated one full day to vector-based reasoning. Focus on vector cosine similarity. And the exam will give you certain SQL syntax and will try to check your knowledge about one of these vector-based SQL function. Also study the basic flow of RAG, which is Retrieval Augmented Generation Application and understand embedding, storing vector, searching, feeding result into an LLM and multi-turn architecture basics. We spent two solid days on governance because this domain is heavily scenario-based and it is sometimes hard to visualize how this model visibility and RBAC is working. So my suggestion, focus on RBAC for GNI features, model allow list and how they control visibility. So you may get a scenario based question where they would say that there is a two different group. Both the group should have access to a common model, but the first group should not have access to the another model. How will you implement this situation? Likewise, cross region inferences and its cost implication is another important topic. Token cost minimization, database roles versus Snowflake application role, usage history tables where this token count is stored. So make sure that you understand Cortex function, usage history and other usage table. Snowflake AI observability, which covers your metrics, evolution, tracing and logging. Observability is mostly theoretical, reading is enough, but governance questions can be tricky. So study these sections very patiently. Document AI is straightforward. One day is enough to cover that. So make sure that you understand required privileges, model creation flow, understand get presigned URL function and what is the purpose of that. Use the final day to complete your understanding on cost management. Some of the functions incur cost for input and output token. Some of them may not cost for output token and how you can track those costs using account usage view. You can compress this entire plan into seven days or stretch it to 14 days, depending on your learning speed and prior experience. But I strongly recommend keeping the sequence exactly as outlined here, because this order builds your understanding in most logical and effective way. Let me quickly recap 10 must know point. Practice LLM function hands on. Don't skip vector similarities. Learn token cost pattern. Understand verified query repository and semantic YAML file construct. Expect screenshot questions during the exam. Know doc AI privileges very well. Practice fine tuning steps. Learn cross region inference behavior, including latency and cost. Read TrueLens, part of the AI observability once. Understand model selection based on capability, latency, and cost. So let's talk about what not to study. This is not a very exhaustive list. You will be eligible for this exam only if you have completed the Snow Pro Core certification exam. So you don't need to learn the Snowflake basics, SQL fundamentals, warehouse tuning, Snow Pipe Stream. You will not get any deep UI navigation kind of a questions and Python beyond simple API awareness. If you want me to create a separate video that walks you through all the study material, what to read, what to skip, how to use it effectively, just let me know in the comments. And if you prefer learning through hands-on example, you can explore the full playlist linked below and in the YouTube card above. It includes step-by-step -step demos that will help you build the confidence you need for this exam. You can also read my detailed medium blog page 
where I have added the complete syllabus, direct documentation links and downloadable study roadmap to simplify your presentation. And, and finally, if you want me to create a full mock test specifically for GNI exam, I will prepare one for you. Thanks for watching this video. This channel is dedicated to helping you master Snowflake, data engineering and GNI skills without the complexity. And if you want to take your learning to the next level, you can also explore my Udemy courses for deeper and structured training. See you in the next video. Keep learning and keep growing.